Okay, welcome back to my new LaTeX tutorial. This is the document that we created in the last video where I explained how you can yeah, make some easy text formatting and change the page layout and so on. So now in this video I will go one step further and explain how you can add sections, subsections and so on. Yeah, we will also create a first table of contents and uh, yeah, show how to create a very simple title page. Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, just dive into the topic. Um, first, I would like to create as usual a new file doc3.tech in order to make sure that we don't lose anything which we have done before. Now that we can delete everything which is written in between begin and end document. So we can start with a blank sheet. Yeah. And if we basically compile that, it will say file not found just because nothing is inserted. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now we can put again, as we have done in the beginning, uh, our blind text in between that. And when we compile this, it is shown here. And now the main change compared to the first video that I created is that now I would like to create a section in front. Yeah? So when you write section, auto completion tells already that there are two options. Uh, the second one we will just ignore for the time being, but we will only stick to the first one. And then we can give also a section name. For example, we will call it first section. And when we compile it, then you can see that uh, LaTeX automatically creates a section here uh, with a number in front of it, which is the section number. Uh, so it's basically a counter that starts counting from one until infinity. And you can also see that LaTeX removes this indent in the beginning. Uh, so now it does not, or this uh, blind text is not be considered as a new a paragraph anymore. Uh, this would change, however, if I add another blind text after that. So just to show what else we can do with sections, I would like to create another section uh, below that, which I call now a uh, second section. And again, we compile that and we maybe can add another blind text below that. Ah, so now uh, we have two sections included. And now uh, in order to show what this counter basically means, um, I, we can add another section, which we call maybe third section before the first one. And when we compile that, you can see that now the third section has number one, the first one has number two, and the second one number three, which means that LaTeX automatically calculates the number in front of each section title yeah, according to the appearance where the section appears. Yeah? So the third one appears first, so this gets number one and so on. This is very important to know because later you can use this to reference a specific section. Okay, but before we come there, um, we can also add subsections. Yeah? Um, so let's suppose we call that first subsection. And when we compile that, you can see that now uh, below the first section, which is in this case the third section, we have um, our first subsection. And when we copy and paste that below that and write here, for example, second subsection, then this appears below that. And the numbering is of course equal to the one of the sections, but you always get the section number in front and these two numbers are divided with a dot. So we can also uh, do that for example here for the first section and below every subsection we can add uh, some blind text and then you can see that now um, the section numbering appears here and also the subsection numbering. So in principle it's very simple. If once you understand the system behind it, then uh, it's of course easy and much more convenient than, for example, any word processing software like Word or OpenOffice. But of course, this is not everything which you can do with uh, sections. Now, there are many other possibilities. For example, um, the, the most important thing which I think you will need when you write an, uh, yeah, especially a larger document is a so-called table of contents. Yeah? So for that, we can use the command, which is auto which is also shown here in the auto completion, which is called table of contents. And when you now compile your document, so you put this on the position where you want that the table of contents appears. So when you now compile the document, you can see that a new section has been added, which is called contents, but it does not have any content. And the reason for that is that when you first compile a LaTeX document, then the compiler translate everything into a PDF document. 
but the references have to be updated in a second run. So we have to basically recompile the LaTeX document once more. And when we do that, now you can see that the table of contents basically appears. So we have now our third section, first section and second sections together with the page numbering. Now, of course, um, this does not show you so much until now because uh, most of the sections are on page one. However, I would like to extend the document a little bit by uh, adding some more blind text here. And you can also insert more blind text by writing a number behind that. Yeah. So for example, uh, in brackets, we write here five and then we compile that. Then this blind text is automatically added five times in a sequence, which means that now you can uh, actually check your layout by adding a lot of more text um, very easily. And now you see that here in the content still the first section is shown on page one, although this is not the case. So uh, as I said, the references are updated whenever you run LaTeX a second time. So we will do that now. And you can see that now uh, the page number is updated. And we can also do this here on several other occasions. So then at the end we get a full document with text and see whether uh, the things are changing according to our intention. Okay, uh, yeah, this is um, of course a nice feature of LaTeX. Uh, you don't have to care about the different numberings and labelings and so on. Everything is done automatically. Uh, in addition to table of contents, I would also like to show now how you can add a title page, uh, at least an easy one. So for that, we go to a place before begin document and we write here the command author and uh, yeah, for example, this could be John Doe. This is just the name of the author of the document and we have to give the document a title. So let's suppose uh, we will call it our first document. And then a third um, command that you can use is called uh, date and there are many options. Either you use, you leave that empty, then it will not be added at all or you insert a date or you just omit this command. And in this case, the current date, the date of today will be used. Yeah. So we will keep it now like this for the time being to show how it works. Now let's suppose we want to add this title page um, in front of our table of contents. So we have to go here, use the command make title, compile it. And then you see that now we have our small little title page in front of contents and then the section starts. Yeah, yeah this is the case when we use articles. Yeah? So this article class should be only used for very small texts. Uh, for example, uh, journal articles which are published, which usually have a length of a few pages, let's suppose five to, to eight. Uh. When you go to larger um, texts, for example, you want to write a lab course report, then I would recommend to change it from article to report. So we will also learn now something about this class now. So when you now recompile that, you can see that automatically LaTeX creates a, a standalone title page with our title, the author name and the date and so on. Then the table of contents start on the next page together with the sections. And now you see that uh, the section numbering does not start with one, but with 0 0.1. Yeah? And this means that um, in this case for report, section is not the highest level in our hierarchy. Yeah? Instead of section, we have to put now something in front, which is called chapter. Yeah? So we call it maybe first chapter. And when we compile that, you can see now here, there is a chapter one created, which is called first chapter. And then the section numbering uses the chapter numbering in combination with the section numbering. So the first section is 1.1. The first subsection is then 1.1.1 and 1.1.2 for the second one and 1.2 for the next section and so on. Yeah, so uh, here in this case, you have to just remember that when you use a report, you have to use chapters in addition to sections and subsections. And yeah, we can also do the same for a book. And uh, this looks as follows. So we have our title page, so one page is left blank, yeah, because this was the backside of our title page basically. Uh, and then we have here the table of contents and the next one is again empty, the even side basically. And then our first chapter starts on the next odd page, which is 
number five. And you can also see that LaTeX automatically adjusts the page numbering according to that. And also um, the footer and the header uh, are adjusted. So you can see here uh, chapter one, first chapter um, on the header on even pages and on odd pages you find the section labeling uh, in combination with the page numbering. Uh, so LaTeX takes care of all these minor details. You don't have to think about it. Of course, you can change manually everything, whatever you want. But for the time being, I think um, this should be sufficient to know how it actually works. Uh, so when we go back to article uh, again, uh, then we have to, of course, remove this chapter. Uh, otherwise, it will not compile and give an error message. Yeah, and now um, there was a small error appearing. Now, with when you recompile it, normally these errors are vanishing. Okay, um, yeah, so this works very well. One other thing which I would like to show now is how to add labels and references. Huh? So for, let's suppose you explain something in the second subsection. Uh, so let's add some blind text here and you explain some important thing uh, and you want to reference that. So we can add a label here behind the second subsection, which we call maybe uh, SEC. I'm normally adding that in front uh, to show that it is a section and not an equation or some um, table or figure and so on. And then I use double dot um, yeah, and then I'm adding some unique label, yeah, which which has to be unique. Otherwise, there this will lead to some problems. So let's suppose uh, we just call it second for second section. And now we go somewhere here, for example, in the first subsection, and uh, we write here: this has been shown in section. And then we can actually reference that. So auto completion already recommends to use ref sec second but of course uh, there will be shown more if you have more labels and when you then compile that you can see that now it's written here this has been shown in section uh, question mark question mark and this is because again we have to rerun LaTeX a second time in order to update the references otherwise um, it, it does not know what to put here and when we rerun that then you can see it's now updated to this has been shown in section 1.2 and this is exactly where we have added our label before. Uh, uh, this was basically here behind the second subsection. Okay, and I guess this is everything what I want to show now. I hope that um, this tutorial series helps you to um, yeah, find a good introduction. And for the other ones who know it already, maybe uh, from time to time during the next videos, you will also be able to learn something new, hopefully. Yeah, and with this, I want to close now my video. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you very soon back with a new video about LaTeX.